fasting is simple and we want to be able to find ways to get more out of it. But I mean, you can't not eat harder than you already are, right? You're not eating. What else can you do? You can exercise, but, but we're always trying to find ways to get more out of it. So we have to start looking at a molecular level. Now, everything I'm talking about today is coming from relatively new research. And in no way, shape or form am I saying that you have to do this and that it's the magic tool. But the evidence behind taurine as an amino acid and as a potential supplemental amino acid or really just eating enough protein and getting adequate amounts of taurine is really fascinating when it comes down to like potential fat adaptation and fatty acid utilization. So let's go ahead and jump right into what I mean. When we are fasting, one of the things that we're trying to do is get our body to switch over from using glucose to using fatty acids as a fuel source. This isn't just because we wanna burn fat. I mean, certainly that's what a lot of us are after, but it's also because that's where the benefits kick in. We want to be utilizing fats because that is allowing us to attain the goal of fat adaptation, where we are activating PPAR alpha, we're activating what's called PGC1A, we're getting more autophagy, more mitochondrial biogenesis, developing more mitochondria, because the more that we get just less and less fuel, the more efficient our body becomes at creating energy. This is one of the cool things. So where does taurine come into play and how do you use it with fasting? Because it's not one of these things that you need to use during a fast, but perhaps right when you start a fast, it could work. Or restoring levels during your eating window. Let's first talk about what taurine can potentially do at a genetic level. Okay, there is evidence that taurine can increase the activity of PGC1A, which is what drives mitochondrial biogenesis. Mitochondrial biogenesis is the formation of new mitochondria or more mitochondrial density. Okay, so it can drive what's called mitophagy, which is where garbage mitochondria, cruddy mitochondria that's not really doing its job anymore gets broken down and you form stronger, newer mitochondria. There's also increases in acetyl coenzyme A oxidase as well as lipoprotein lipase. All these things have to do with lipids, have to do with utilizing fats and taurine seems to be playing a big role with that. The other interesting thing that could be happening with taurine is the stabilization of the mitochondria. So when we are processing energy, albeit it's a lot cleaner when you're fasting, but when we're processing energy, it's a relatively dirty process, okay? And that creates a lot of reactive oxygen species, specifically in the mitochondria where we are manufacturing energy. So you have oxidants that are floating around in the mitochondria. This can trigger DNA damage, this can trigger all kinds of things, right? But it's normal. Well, it turns out that taurine has a potential stabilizing effect where because of its reactive oxygen species scavenging abilities, it can make it so it's a cleaner environment, therefore increasing what's called ATP turnover. So you're in theory making it so that your body can in a more cleaner fashion process and create energy in a fasted state or any state really, but definitely notice more in a fasted state if that's the situation you're in. But what about the fatty acid oxidation? This is where things get interesting. We have to look at a performance oriented study to get a grip on it. So a study that was published in the journal Frontiers of Physiology and it was in 2021, so relatively new paper. It found that just one gram of taurine taken pre-exercise decreased lactate levels and increased levels of glycerol. What does that have to do with fasting? Okay, if you were to take a blood sample of someone that was deep in a fast, there's a good chance they would also have high levels of glycerol. Why is this? Because when we are oxidizing fats as a fuel source, we are left with glycerol left over. You see, fatty acids are bound to a glycerol backbone when it's in our fat storage. So when we tap into that fat, we cut and snip off the fatty acids away from the glycerol backbone. The fatty acids go and get burned and the glycerol backbone is just left hanging. It's like, what's going on? But that is an indicator that we are going through fatty acid oxidation. We see this with taurine in performance situations. We see it with fasting in just regular fasting situations. So, but when taking what we already know about taurine influencing things at a genetic level to be skewed more towards utilizing fat, it tells us that if we were deficient in taurine, which doesn't really happen much because we created ourselves, but we would really limit our ability to potentially use fats. 
But let's break it down more. There was a study that was published in the International Journal of Sports Nutrition that gave subjects 1.66 grams of taurine one hour prior to exercise. And you know what? They found that they increased fatty acid oxidation by 16%. So this is happening potentially because, and I say potentially because we just don't really know everything yet, right? We don't know the whole picture. We don't know all the mechanistic actions here, but it is allowing us to substrate switch. If you're a veteran of my channel, you know that I talk about metabolic flexibility. It looks like taurine might be one of the better amino acids towards really helping us become metabolically flexible and switching gears. So basically allowing us to prioritize fats and let the carbohydrates take a back seat and remain in storage form in the glycogen, at least under endurance activity. So if you're someone that is fasting and you're doing low intensity cardio, perhaps taurine could be something that actually drives that further. Would taurine break a fast? Probably not because it's not really insulinogenic. It's not like leucine. So it's one of those aminos that, yeah, like maybe if you drank an energy drink that had some taurine in it, you could actually get a positive effect. But the most important thing is keeping your stores of taurine high so your body doesn't have to start tapping into them as much. Okay, the best way you can do this is eat absolute sufficient amounts of protein in your eating window. And I know I talk about this all the time, but for more than just this reason, it is literally the most important thing that you could probably do with fasting. More important than getting even enough calories getting more than enough protein in during your eating window. I don't care if you're using shakes, I don't care if you're using good quality cottage cheese, I don't care if you're using steak, chicken, as long as it's good quality stuff, get the protein in. I did put a link down below for ButcherBox if you wanna try them because they have grass-fed, grass-finished ribeyes that are like the most amazing thing in the world. They also have some really awesome grass-fed, grass-finished New Yorks and some fillets. They have delicious chicken. They have every kind of thing you can imagine. They have scallops, they have wild sockeye salmon, they have wild caught cod. Any kind of sustainable or grass-fed, grass-finished meat you can think of, they have. So that link is down below and then they deliver it to your doorstep. This is what's cool. So you order it, you've got it in a few days, one done, you're totally set. Or you can put it on a subscription, you can get it monthly, just make it super easy so you don't have to be going to the grocery store, especially as we start getting into a situation where like food is having a harder time getting to the grocery stores. So we're starting to find, I noticed at my store today that like they didn't have any 93% lean beef at any of the three stores that I went to. So anyhow, the point is, is being able to stock up, load up your freezer a little bit more with the good stuff. So that link is down below in the description for ButcherBox. You can check them out after you watch this video. So what happens as we fast is as our body starts utilizing fats more, the fats then are able to signal what is called PPAR alpha. And I talk about this all the time, right? So if you're utilizing fats as a fuel source, these lipids will activate PPAR alpha in a cell. So when a cell starts burning fat all the time, it recognizes, well, wait a minute, I need to change myself in an effort to be able to burn fat better. If this is the way that life is going, I need to get good at utilizing fats. So the fats then signal this PPAR alpha, this nuclear receptor protein, to travel to the nucleus of a cell to alter the cell to become more efficient at using fats. It is literally fat adaptation at its core. That is exactly what we are after. So if you can expedite this process at A, a genetic level by using taurine, and B, a substrate availability level by using taurine, you can make the theoretical argument that you can speed up fat adaptation, which also coincides with the fact that people that are sufficiently eating protein or eating sufficient amounts of protein might end up there faster as well. But again, there's not enough data to say with certainty. The other cool thing is that at a free radical scavenging level, taurine might be very beneficial for a fast too. Just like I talked about the mitochondrial stabilizing effect. Well, when you look at tissues that are damaged, tissues that are damaged a lot of times have taurine along with it. So if you look at tissue that was damaged in a lab, you would see taurine there. And the reason that I mention this is because when you are going through like exercise or anything like that, we have to be aware of this, but we don't want to be taking in a bunch of exogenous antioxidants, but taurine might have an effect at neutralizing some of the reactive oxygen species that come as a result of being under stress. Why is this important when you're fasting? Because fasting is a stressor, okay? So for example, when you are depriving yourself of food, 
you are causing and inflicting stress upon yourself. Fasting is a literal hormetic stressor. That is everything that we want out of fasting comes because we are stressing our body. But what I don't want you to do is take a bunch of vitamin C to try to neutralize that. Why? Because that's an exogenous antioxidant that you don't need to be trying to do the job for you. I want your body to do the job. But what you can do is give your body taurine at the beginning of a fast so it has the tools necessary to help out with this whole process. Because what the taurine does is it neutralizes the oxidants into what is called taurine bromamine and taurine chloramine, which are easier for the body to deal with. So taurine isn't the literal antioxidant, it's like the first step that then allows your body to deal with it. So again, I'm speculating here because that's what I do. I look at all the research and I try to forward think in a world that doesn't have a ton of research in it, right? So with this, maybe we're getting more out of our fast. So it begs the question, once again, when do I take the taurine? I would do it this way. If you're not exercising, take taurine right when you wake up towards the beginning of your fast. If you are exercising, take taurine one hour before your workout, okay? If you don't wanna take taurine during your fast because you don't know what it's gonna do, take it at the end of your eating window along with your protein. And all you would need is during a fast, one gram in the morning and or one gram prior to workout because that's all that the research is showing, that one to two grams does the job. If you're taking it with food, possibly even less because you have protein coming in that's bringing you taurine. So it's one of the most inexpensive things. We're talking cents, pennies, that you might be able to influence the effects of your fast. So as always, keep it locked right here on my channel. I'll see you tomorrow.